So you've been thinking about moving to Greenville and you're really unsure of where you want to live. You've been looking online, you've seen houses, you think they're all amazing, but you don't know what neighborhoods look like. And you heard Five Forks was amazing, but you didn't like the idea of all that traffic everybody's talking about. Well, I have a hidden gem for you. It's called Tanner Road. Tanner Road is parallel to Woodruff Road and it's right at the front of Five Forks. So you have all the ability to use Five Forks amenities and the things and the people and all that kind of wonderful stuff of Five Forks, but you don't have to deal with all that crazy traffic. If this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is about the Greenville, South Carolina area, then make sure you hit subscribe and tap the bell for notifications so you can be the first to know about all the great things in Greenville, South Carolina. I'm Tracy Roberts with the Atlas Home Team, and we're helping people just like you from all over the world relocate to this beautiful area. So whether it is a month from now, if it's a year from now that you're going to be moving, don't hesitate to reach out. All of our information is below, and we'd love to help you have a smooth transition to the upstate. So let's go ahead and check out Tanner Road. Awesome. So let's go down Tanner Road. So on the left, you're going to see an older house with good bones, and then you're going to see a new house. So You'll find on this road, it is a highly trafficked area in the mornings and in the evenings because it is one of the roads to get to Butler Road, which gets you to 385. Then you can either get to 85 North or South. So it's definitely one of the roads that are highly traveled. Um, parallel to this is Bridges, which is another one of those roads. On the right, you're gonna see a house that has been revitalized over the time. It's definitely come through and seen so much beauty that ways that they have done that. So let's go ahead and tour Summerfield. You notice that when we come in here, that little hill makes it a little bit hard to see, so you just need to be very careful as you're coming through. Most of the homes in this neighborhood are two-story homes. They have two car garages, and when they were built, 98% of them only had a two-car driveway or like a four-car driveway with a, like two lanes, right? So some of them have three pads because they had them done afterwards. Um, the HOA in this neighborhood is between 375 and 400. We are in March of 2024 as we're going over this. So obviously that can change. Inside this neighborhood, you're gonna have a pool as an option. You have street lights, um, sidewalks. You notice that the houses were built, um, or at least the permit for the neighborhood was definitely pulled before 2015. So they all have their mailboxes right at the end of their driveway, which is a good feature if you don't wanna have um, a centrally located um, mailbox for a community, if you wanted to be able to have it right next to your house. That's a, extremely important to some people. We absolutely love that for our daughter. She has autism and one of her favorite things is to check the mail. And so if we had to drive her to the mail, it wouldn't be the same experience for her um, to be able to get the mail, right? So the average price on those are 375 to 400,000, well, 450, between 375 and 450, depending on the time that it was revitalized because these are about 15 years old, right? So they could be some of them up the, yeah, about 15 years, 20 years old. Um, so some of them have been refurbished, have upgrades. Some of them have stacked stone on the outside. Some of them have brick and siding. Some are all siding. So there's lots of variables that create what the value of the home is going to be. I'm sure you know that. And then the average square foot, I believe was 177, um, 175 to 200 square feet, um, average square foot price. So that gives you a good idea. You see how that they fit all four of their cars in their driveway. They don't have an extra pad and it works great for them. Um, so you will find in this neighborhood a few cul-de-sacs, which is great. So if you have, like we have sometimes, very rarely, do we have an ice storm or a snowstorm? Like this is a great hill for sledding or something like that. Now I wanna make sure we, if we talk about an ice storm or a snowstorm that we fully get the good picture with it. You may get them every, two years maybe three years and when we say it it's not like a nor'easter from where i'm from up in maryland where you, you would lose um like the ability for a lot of things where it would have two to four feet of snow we may get two to four inches of snow there's sometimes we'll get like seven or eight inches maybe out of a 10 year time frame we may have that one year that gets it but truthfully it's not the case many times I don't honestly know why we even have sleds in our garage. I think we keep it in hopes that it'll snow. <laughs> it is probably not going to. But when it does snow, so when they call for it, 
it's most of the time going to be in uh, Traveler's Rest or the Blue Ridge Mountain section um, of our area. This is more in, um, more east of that, so you wouldn't have that as much. This is in the front of Five Forks. Um, you're not in Five Forks, but you're at the front of it. Um, you're as close as you can get to it without being in it. This is a Greenville area, a zip code actually, and um, you would still have the Greenville type of things to utilize. So as we drive through, you notice that they can have their basketball court in their um, driveway, which is nice. The HOA doesn't get down, like get on them for that. Um, some HOAs do. So when you're moving here, if you'd like to have that or other items in your yard, you need to make sure that you tell me, because I promise you, we will scour the HOA covenants for you and make sure that you're seeing the properties that fit what you need for your family so you're not going to get stuck into a situation where you buy a house and it doesn't have the ability for you to live the lifestyle that you're looking for. So as you see, we're driving through. Most of the homes are um, standing tall. They're like great. Uh, there's a few that are not. And what I would say in those scenarios, you have to think of it this way. It's March here. They haven't had time to do the pressure washing and they haven't had time to get their lawns done and things like that but for the majority most of them looked really great the pressure washing that was needed was just because we had winter i would definitely say this is one of the neighborhoods that you didn't have to worry about how others were maintaining it um so when we go to the left i want you to pay attention i'm having to double check a few times because on the left hand side that little hill it's very hard to see at times on the right hand side you have great visibility but like I said in the morning or the evening it's going to be very difficult because of the traffic pattern. The next neighborhood we're going to come to is Woodington. Now Woodington would be you know how most people say that older homes have the good bones. This is a good bones neighborhood. These homes have existed for a really long time. You're going to have various elevations, various styles of homes. You're going to have all brick homes. You're going to have siding homes. Um, you're going to have uh, ranch style homes like Ramblers. If you're from up north, that's what we used to call them. You're going to have uniqueness in each thing. So if you're wanting to have a, be in a neighborhood that doesn't have cookie cutter per se, this would be a good neighborhood for that. And then you can do your own thing with it. You could upgrade the kitchen if it's not already been done. You could do um, beautiful fencing like this if you don't want to have the normal um, six foot fencing things like that. So the HOA in Woodington is only $400 a year, which is pretty great. And what that is, the average price home in this neighborhood is $350,000 to $450,000, which gives it an average square foot price of $175 to $210 average square foot per foot. So that's a pretty great deal. Um, if you notice, there's some really um, cool lots on the back of it. There's the ones that have, they're right up to the woods and they're pretty tranquil. You don't really have a lot of houses on top of each other. Now, if you notice, there are houses that have already started making them really cool. Like he's already starting, he looks like he's just scoping out and starting his um, spring uh, look, right? So he's trying to figure out his landscaping she's out there doing her spring so that's what i was saying about the other neighborhood there's a lot of things that are getting done um so don't take it at face eye right now like face value right now um just understand if you narrow down one of these neighborhoods and you're like hey i can't get there yet tracy can you go ahead and get me an updated video for that one neighborhood i can totally do that leave that in the comments i'll be making sure to get to your comments and get you guys what you need so this one has the cul-de-sac right here. I wanted to make sure you got to see that it has a basketball court like right here built into their cul-de-sac for the kids to be able to use. And it's pretty nice so that way you don't have to have it in front of your house if you don't want to or if you just want to have the kids not bouncing the ball up front of your house, they can just go down to the cul-de-sac. So I think that's kind of cool. And you see when you look at all the different elevations there's so many different styles and when I say there's different styles there's not just different styles there's of the exterior the interior is a completely different floor plan so it's not like where you were or we had a video for River's Edge where they 
had amazingness where they had maybe five different elevation, well, five different floor plans and three different elevations with different colors to make it different. Um, this is actually different floor plans. I know of a few people that have lived here for 20 to 30 years and it, they just love it. And where it's located, Tanner Road is located parallel to Woodruff Road. And Woodruff Road is a really busy road that can get you to everything. This is a great selection of ability to be able to get to everything in the evenings after you get off work. And when you want to go to work, you would be able to take the right out of this way, or you can get on to 385 off of that loop to get you where you're wanting to work or where you um, have to drop your kids off for school. It's a great location. We've actually lived in this area, hmm, oh gosh, 21 years. <laughs> so we've lived in various parts of this um, area for 21 years. Why I keep looking back and forth is there's a bush that you can't really see that's on my left hand side so that hill that we were talking about i'm just double checking that we're going to have safety and visibility so i'm going to go ahead and go and just going to make it to where it's a tight turn because Tanner road is also a skinny road so there isn't a lane to like pull off if there's an issue or anything like that we're going to now turn into the valley at tanner estates 99 percent of the people are not going to say it that way they're just going to say tanner estates so Tanner Estates is a really nice neighborhood. It was originally built by Legendary. The left house right there is the model home. It's gorgeous. There's a pool, there's um, basketball courts, and we'll make sure we see them on our way out. The average price of the houses in the neighborhood would be range from $475,000 to $625,000. Now the $425,000 you're gonna find were actually built by Macar Homes. They were not built by a legendary. So 625 would be your ones that are the three stories that would have literally three stories. Um, and then there's ones that have um, the houses that have two story with a basement or on the back that we're gonna come up to in a minute. Some of them have three stories with actually a walkout basement. So it is a four story home. Then when they bought the home, they originally bought it with a three story house with an unfinished basement because they did not finish them um, or it would be considered for and that would have been outside the code of build at the time if I remember correctly. They would have to finish it after but I do know there are a few over here where we're going that they do have them finished now. So it is enormous house like when I say enormous some of these are with the all four floors it's about 7,000 square feet. So as we come up to the left of over here you're going to see houses that back up to woods and there's a little tiny creek in the back and it gives where you have tranquility and it's just really peaceful over there it, it the one downside would be that you do have a lot of congestion because the houses are really on top of each other and so even if you have like over here they have a three car three pad driveway right and this one does as well you're still going to have all your cars like literally right on top of you. And if somebody parks on the road, it's kind of tight. But that would be like one of the only drawbacks that I see is the houses being close together and having the cars literally on top of each other because everything about this neighborhood is stunning. I absolutely love this neighborhood. The people in it are wonderful. The community, the networking with each other, the loving on each other's family. She's doing the outside work already and it's just a really great neighborhood for that. The pool is large, the playground is great. We're gonna pull up to that in a minute. Um, you'll notice that there's like different floor plans and elevations. So example, I know the floor plans well enough, so I can tell you this is the exact same house. This one has um, an extra um, driveway on it, but the interior is one thing, the exterior looks different, which made it very, nice for people that love the certain floor plans but didn't want their house to look exactly like their neighbor and i feel like they did a really good job on making it to where people selected colors that were different than their neighbors so when they went to the design center they say okay the house next to you is going to have these colors you may or may not want them and who's going to want their house to have the same colors as their neighbor probably not many people so over to our right is the pool and there's bathrooms in a little covered area. And there's a basketball court and there's tennis courts. It's just a really great neighborhood. 
a little play playground with even a toddler baby swing. So there's things for every age in this neighborhood. They have a great Halloween. It's just a really close knit community here. The average square foot, I believe, is 175 to $225. Um, and that's pretty great. And then the HOA is only $600 a year for having this many amenities. And it is perfectly located. So when you take a right out of here, you have extreme visibility. When you take a left out of here, you have extreme visibility. The schools are a blue ribbon award-winning schools. And, um, sorry, uh, sorry, they're uh, blue ribbon schools. And what that means is they've hit different criteria um, for them to be able to get those. So if schools are important to you, just make sure you reach out and look on to niche.com and greatschools.org. Sorry, tongue tied. So it was very simple to pull out of here, great visibility. There's two entrances. So most of the time, this is an entrance that's open. During the morning, I've noticed that they gate it off a lot. Um, so yeah, we're gonna first go into the next one on the left instead of going to Warrington. We'll do that one, because that one has two different sections. And so I wanna hit those side, but like back to back. So this is Tanner Hall. This is the newest community inside of Tanner Road. You're going to notice that there's not a lot of yard. What's cool is you have three car garages and most of them, if you look, will have three car pads to let you be able to pull into that garage. So they're good size home. Now you will have two um, story houses as well as one story with bonus houses, which is great to have that much, um, Op, that many options on new construction here as well as not having a lot of maintenance having um, very little maintenance for your yard is great having the vinyl fencing for the most of their um, HOA covenants is great um, I like that they have the ability to have the basketball hoop here and the average price is five seventy five to seven hundred thousand dollars and that the 700,000 is going to be the larger homes and they have tons of amenities in these houses. Like the upgrades are like galore. So you're gonna have the granite, you're gonna have the tile floor, you're gonna have all of that. These houses that you're gonna see over here, these are the Tanner Estates that we just looked at. On the right hand side right here, if you notice, remember when I was saying earlier that if it wasn't built or had the permits weren't pulled before, um, a certain date that the, the Postal Service made it to where there was community mailboxes. Well, this particular neighborhood was built after that, so it has to have community mailboxes. If you notice, when we were in Tanner Estates, um, it did not have that. The, the mailboxes were in the front of it. Tanner Estates is a big neighborhood. You're going to see it in the back of a lot of the different neighborhoods that we go to. And I'll point it out as you go, because it's bigger than it looks. So you have various colors. I love the, that you have the light and the airy colors in this neighborhood. And it's kind of a cute little small neighborhood. Yep, it's just in a great location as well. So across the street is Warrington. There's two different sections of Warrington. They don't have two different names, but they are two different, they do have two different entrances. So I'm just shooting across. There is extreme visibility for both of these. Um, First, we're gonna go down this little road right here because I wanna make sure you get to see the tennis courts or the pickleball courts or however that you're gonna use them. The average square feet in this, uh, per square foot in this neighborhood is 175 to 235. And the HOA, um, sorry, I'll grab the HOA in a second. The average price was three seventy-five to six hundred thousand. So definitely, it's a sizing thing. So the six hundred thousand would be a bigger home, um, has more upgrades. It may have um, maybe a basement. We'll go check out some of these things. It's a great size um, area right here. If you see that it has a playground, it has the pool over here, and the tennis courts. Where again, you can use them as pickleball. The HOA in this neighborhood to have all of this access is only $500 a year. And this is a really nice little alcove. I would say the only thing I noticed is with that many um, neighbors, 
that may be not enough parking. So if I lived in this neighborhood, maybe I would need to have a golf cart. So that way I wouldn't have to park my car down here and I could park my golf cart on the grass. That would maybe the only thing that I see as a drawback. So as we go through here, you're gonna notice that most of these homes have brick and siding. There's gonna, that's gonna be like the thing as you notice for the majority of them. Very few are gonna be one story homes. Majority of them are gonna be two story homes. The, the HOA is kind of lenient here for a lot of things. Like if you notice the door in front of me is a blue color. Now other neighborhoods may not be okay with that. They may be a little bit more picky and say you, it has to go with the flow of the house and give you certain colors. So that gives you a little bit more options in this neighborhood. Um, I don't know if a door color would bother me if a neighborhood had a different door color than would fit it. So I don't know, it just depends. You'll notice over here on the left, that's a, a pretty elevation with a lot of brick front. Um, they did a great job by putting um, the palm, palm trees in front of it. So as we go through them, you'll see that they have very similar styles. This was a very much of a cookie cutter neighborhood when it um, was built. You see that most of them still have the two pad um, driveways where you can fit four cars on it. If they're smaller cars, they do not have three pads and that, that was done afterwards. Afterwards, um, I guess my speech today is not as well as we thought it would be. I love that they have all the outdoor basketball, like the basketball things for outdoor activities. I love that. Um, yeah, so another thing you'll notice is when you look at the landscaping, you can always tell a neighborhood's age by the trees in the yard because when a neighborhood is built, they completely level everything. It's just, oh, like just in case you didn't know, it all turns to red clay because everything underneath of us is 99.9% .9 red clay, which is not easy to get out of your stuff if you're trying to buy a new construction community. Just know that you do not want to wear your favorite shoes as we go look for that because of the fact that um, the red clay will get on you. And if you have pets and they're diggers, uh, yucky. So we have a bulldog. Um, it's an English Bulldog. Her name is Hermione and she likes to dig and her little paws come back. I won't say little, they're actually big paws. Um, they come back all like muddy, like orange and light colors. Not very fun. But she gets cleaned up and she's fine. Um, if you know anything about Bulldogs, that's just how they are. Wait for that car to go. Now it is basically the same thing, it just has two different entrances, it's kind of weird. Um, it's a large neighborhood. Now if you love yard sales, I'm going to tell you, during the summer, this is your jam. If you, if you live in a different neighborhood and you live close enough and still want to go over here, I'm telling you. On a Saturday during the summer, whether they're having their neighborhood one or not, you're still going to find five to ten of them. It's just, it's crazy. They always have a yard sale. Tanner Road is definitely big for yard sales. So let's take a tour through here. Just a couple streets so you can see what I was saying. How they're very similar. Not very many differences. But the trees um, are mature. And like I was saying, if it's a new neighborhood, the trees wouldn't be big at all. Um, like you saw in Tanner, Tanner Hall. Tanner Hall is no, uh, new, so the trees are real small. While well, that's a huge tree, so obviously this neighborhood has been here for a while. It's a good indicator the age of the neighborhood. So we will turn around in a minute so we can take you down a few other ones. Just so make sure you can see with this section of the front of Five Forks. Well, well this isn't technically Five Forks. This is a great alternative to living in the Five Forks. We live, live very close by. I actually lived in a neighborhood off of Tanner Road at one time. And I will tell you that for me, it, it's it's a great situation where you don't have to um, you don't have to go through all the traffic at times of Five Forks, but you can still utilize everything at Five Forks. And there's great restaurants right off of like the little side roads of Woodruff. So and you can get to Publix and CVS and all of these things so much easier. 
life hack if you live on Tanner or near Tanner. The CVS at the corner of Tanner and Butler um, is the better one in my opinion than the one if you use the in five works. So take that for what you will. Um, you can have flags like you noticed. Um, there was the Palmetto State flag, just the um, South Carolina flag. Um, but you see how I said that though. So if you live here, you'll know why I said that. It's because there's Clemson and then there's South Carolina colleges here. And if I said South Carolina flag, somebody may misunderstand and think that I'm saying the University of South Carolina. And if I say the Palmetto flag, then that would mean that they understand it's the Palmetto tree with the moon on it for our state flag. So that's why I said it the way I said it. So across the way, I think we're going to go into Tanner's Mill. Right. Now this one has some visibility issues on the right hand side because there is a little bit of a hill but it's not horrible. Um, you still have enough visibility but there isn't, like you're, when you're really dumping right out into the road, so you've got to be very careful. And cars sadly do go really fast um, right next to this section. Not on other parts of Tanner Road for some reason, just this particular middle section of it. So you just got to be really careful when you're pulling out from where it's in. And we are, it's Saturday and we're traveling on the road on March uh, 16th. Yes, this is Tanner's Mill neighborhood. And so I will take you through different sections. Now this is a lesser expensive neighborhood. It's a great alternative if you want to live on Tanner Road and you want to be near everything, but you don't want to spend that extra 100,000 or $300,000, and you don't need all that. You're just like, you know, I just want to live a nice life, and I want to have a good um, house and with good um, neighbors. This is a good alternative for that. Um, see how everybody's real friendly, and um, they're walking their dogs, and there's two-story homes. There's mostly, we're going to be majority of siding. There are some that have brick and siding. Tanner's Mills HOA is only $350 a year, which is kind of nice because they do have a whole other community, which we're going to come up to. Um, the average price for the homes are $310,000 to $350. If you notice on the left hand side over there, there was a little bridge that took them from the houses behind there to this area. The houses behind the pool area, that's again, that's Tanner Estates. Um, those big houses are um, right there. That's a little bit of tree line, a little bit of tranquility there. Now they did have a lot of parking for their um, pool area, which is nice. The average per square foot would be $155 to $175 per square foot on the house, which means that you're going to get a good amount of house for the money. I can tell by the floor plans that, and the elevations that some of these houses not, maybe not all of them, but some of these houses were built by D.R. Horton. One of the neighborhoods we're going to go to in a little bit on this road is Ashby Park, and those are also, that whole community was built by D.R. Horton. That uh, One of the floor plans we just drove by was the um, Avalon. You see there, there's a few of them that are single story homes, so where those single story with a bonus room above the garage, or we would call it a frog here. Um, but it's definitely, definitely a good neighborhood if you want to have affordability, quality, and a good lifestyle with a great location. Tanner, Tanner's Mill would definitely give you that. You see all the people are cutting their trees because they're gonna have them picked up because they're starting to do their spring cleaning for their yard and landscaping and everything. Our area is extremely lush and green and most people take pride in their properties and um, are really thankful for the ability to enjoy the outdoor, outdoor activities of landscaping and things like that. And there's little picnic tables and there's um, an area for you to park your bikes next to the pool. 
So that's kind of fun for the kids. Let the kids ride their bikes to the pool. And there was a little playground on the other side. So it's got a playground. It has um, the pool. It's really great, right? Notice also the trees. Notice the, the, the um, mailboxes. So again, we knew from the looking at the houses that they were a little older. And yet we also have the validation from the size of the houses and the mailboxes being in front of the homes and not in a community spot, which is good. Yeah, I think some people may like that better. The other side of the neighborhood is exactly the same. It's the same quality of homes. It's um, the same like size yards and everything. Now, when you're pulling out of here on the right hand side, it's pretty easy, but where I've got to be careful is it kind of does dump you out right on the road again. So you see how close that car is as it's coming in front of me? That's because that's how close the road is for you to have visibility. So this is a neighborhood you got to be really careful when you're pulling out if you're taking a left for sure. neighborhood by name. It's just houses that don't have an HOA left. It's just a, a community that's still there. Um, here is Chandler Ridge. Chandler's Ridge is an HOA of only 175 a year and its price per square foot is um, 145 to 175 dollars and it's 185 to 380 oh, sorry 185,000 to 380,000 dollar homes. Now here you're also going to have homes that are various floor plans, various elevations, various styles. Um, they're not cookie cutters, which is cool. This is an older community and you're gonna see all different levels of, um, some people are already doing their spring um, landscaping, some are gonna delay on that. And there's not as strict guidelines on it in this neighborhood. So this person is updating their home. That's why it has the new windows and the new setting. For the most part on Tanner Road and the front of Five Forks and in the Five Forks area, you're going to find that most people do take care of their properties and that they're gonna take care of their houses in general. They're, they they take quite a, quite a lot of pride in it. You may have the random person that you never know their story. It could be like somebody's spouse has passed away and they just can't take care of it or maybe somebody their husband's deployed or something like that now we don't have a, an ample amount of military people we do have some military people or their spouses will stay here while they get deployed so they can be near their family so you don't we don't know their story and sometimes it's better just to be a good neighbor and say hey um looks like you may need a little bit of help can we help you in any way and then you go that route with it but this is a house across the way that I absolutely love. Um, one of the things that I think would be really cool is to buy that and then paint it white and do a lot of cool stuff with it. And um, I don't know, I just thought it was a really cool choice. There are some one-off houses on this road. There's not an ample amount of them, but there are some. We're about to go into Meadowbrook. Meadowbrook is an older neighborhood and there are a lot of homes in this neighborhood that have been revitalized. There are some that have not, um, but the ones that have are definitely gorgeous lands. I've sold many houses in here. Um, as we go through, the HOA is 275, and the average price in this neighborhood is 275 to 310 thousand dollars. One of the cool things about this neighborhood is in the back of it there is the ability for walking trails and stuff like that to get to um, the schools. So if like if you have one of those houses and you have a gate, you can get to that. It's definitely something that they'd like to do. They like their, uh, so the average square foot um, per, per square foot 
is 145 to 180 so it just depends now you're going to find a lot more like you see on the left hand side you're going to find a lot more one-story homes in this neighborhood than you would um in other neighborhoods that we're going to go through on um, tanner so this is a great option this would be a neighborhood we would call good bones um because the houses are older and um they just need to be some revitalization maybe update a kitchen maybe um check out um what you could do at the backyard all all kinds of different things to make it even better now there's some of them that do have a brick um, front and um, vinyl on uh, yeah and vinyl siding um not many but this is a cute one on the right hand side this one doesn't really fully match the neighborhood but that's cool if you look at this one this one doesn't really there has more of a charleston look and it does have a basement that's a very rare thing there's probably maybe only four or five basement houses here which is totally cool because you can have the the rare house in the neighborhood and you can have the things you're looking for to the right is where there's the rec area and the walking trails and all of that so if you're an outdoorsy person and you like to go for a walk or take your dog for a walk, you can definitely do that through there. Okay. One thing I noticed is that the roads are kind of tighter and people aren't utilizing their driveways as much, which is they have driveways. So I don't know if there's just not a rule for that inside their HOA or it's just not like mandated or anything but um for the most part everybody's keeping like that's a gorgeous lawn i don't know it almost looks fake it's so green so they're they're getting it and the ones that haven't i think they're just waiting to get some maybe a couple weekends in a row that they could work on the spring um landscaping or maybe they could hire somebody um to have somebody come through you see the brown grass that's not um green that's what we call dormant. That grass hasn't decided it's gonna not sleep anymore or whatever exactly the term is. I know it's called dormant, dormant, but I'm not exactly sure what the process is. What happens is during our winter, it all turns that color and we call it dormant. And then as spring comes, you start to get the gray, the green grass and things. It's kind of like when your um, leaves and your trees start to change colors and then they fall off. That's what also happens to our grass when um, that time frame comes. That grass over there, oh my gosh, it looks like somebody painted the grass. It's so great. That's craziness. They must have a new sod or something. That looks gorgeous. So, this is great visibility. And the road to my right will take you to where there's a neighborhood called Heritage Lakes. That would be more something I would say is a Highway 14 neighborhood, not more so a Tanner Road neighborhood. But you do have to take a little bit to get into Heritage Lakes through there. It's a great neighborhood. It's an older neighborhood. They have um, pools and all that kind of stuff. This is called Ashby Park. It was established in 2000. It has two different parts um, of the neighborhood. We're gonna go over the differences of them once we get there. There are one-story homes with bonuses. There's two-story homes. These were all built by DR Horton. The average price is um, 350 to 485,000. The square, the per square foot is ranges from 175 to 225. Um, there is actually a pond in the middle of it that has like a walking trail around it. It's really cool. So when um, our little girl was young, we actually lived in this neighborhood. And one of my favorite things to do was to take her to go walk around there because she needed to get um, some physical therapy. And she's our daughter that has autism. And her little tactile, she'd love to grab the popcorn to feed the geese that are there and all of that so it's just a really great experience for you to do with your young children or walk your dog if you're looking to have some tranquility of that the houses to the left 
are all obviously on the pond. Everything um, that was in the middle over there is on the pond. Some of them have gates that go up there. You can kayak on a pond and things like that on paddle boat, but you obviously can have a boat in there. This is one of the, the houses in the neighborhood that's very unique. It's a little different than the rest of them. Never really understood that. And the majority of them are gonna have the two drive the two pad driveways and as I was saying that it's built older so it has the mailboxes in front of it, it has the older trees, more mature landscaping and this neighborhood's amazing at uh, 4th of July, Halloween and all of that. As we go around this corner you're going to see these houses to the left of me. Those houses are where the pond has their benefit, these have their benefit too. They usually put gates on the back of them because you can come right out to Malden Elementary and Malden uh, Middle School and just walk right over there. You don't have to drive your kids to school. You can just watch them walk over to the school um, to make sure that they're okay. And it's just a great thing to have that right there. So here's a couple of the unique ones that are like the other ones. So there's only like two or three, very, very rare to have them a little different like that. Um, there is a pool in, in the community. We're about to pool next to it. There's a basketball court and there's a playground. The pool has two bathrooms and a covered area and some picnic tables. Great for a little kid's birthday party, speaking from experience. Um, and there's lots of parking next to the pool. It is a large pool, I'll say that. It's definitely, it fits the size of the neighborhood. Sometimes people don't really like this neighborhood because if you look to your right, there's the power lines. I never had an issue with it. I know a lot of our clients have moved here and have never had an issue with it, but to some people it bothers them. So just a heads up, that might be something you have to think about. We're pulling into some into the area called Lands Fair. These are patio homes that they do not pay for any of their grass to be cut. That's done inside of their HOA, and that's a monthly HOA that takes care of all the landscaping. As long as their back gate is open, um, the backyard will be done too. They're all three bedrooms, two baths, they're full brick homes with a bonus above the garage. And it's a smaller area, there's one cul-de-sac straight ahead and then as we go to the right you're going to be able to go to an, one off street that has a cul-de-sac as well where we're going to come out is onto butler road and i'll show you on the left hand side we actually when i lived here um my doctor's office was right here my dentist's office was inside of ashby park and um everything was right here so example this was, um, at the time, this was my doctor's office. And then to the right is where my dentist was, actually right here was where my dentist was. And they used to have um, a children's pediatrician right there. So we never had to go anywhere really for anything like that. And when we come ahead of us is where Butler Road is. Where we are right now, you are gonna have the ability to, if you took the left, you would be able to get to 385 and probably two and a half miles, if that. And you're probably four or five miles from Malden High School. So if you lived in this neighborhood, you wouldn't want to take the exit that we came into. You would want to take this as your exit because you could get to 385 much easier. And the traffic patterns in the morning, you would not be able to get out that way very easily. And you would also be put into a long line on Tanner Road and still have to take a left. So you would be better playing Frogger right here to have somebody let you come out to be able to go where you're going, especially if you were um, the teenagers going to the high school, it would be one less road for them to have to travel. And going outright wouldn't be the best way either because if you're going down Tanner, you would then end up on Bethel. It's kind of like you give a mouse a cookie, you still have to do certain things to get what you needed. So that wouldn't be what you wanted to do. Also, as we were talking about the, the doctor's offices and the dentist and things like that, right there it's we are like to the right you would be able to see cvs is right literally right here you where i'm sitting you could walk to cvs in less than maybe 30 or 40 yards um you have the sushi place right across the street 
um, various places that you can get to. There's restaurants right here, and we are less than a mile from getting to Woodruff Road. It is a great location. There you have it, the hidden gem that's Tanner Road, right at the front of Five Forks that runs parallel to Woodruff Road. While it has its own type of traffic, it's nothing like Five Forks morning traffic or the evening traffic in Five Forks. If you have any thoughts on moving to the Greenville area, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm Tracy Roberts with the Atlas Home Team, and we'd love to connect with you. Don't forget to hit subscribe and tap the bell for notifications. Until next time.